Hello, wizards, witches, and everyone in between. My name is Emma, and welcome to the first week of the Biblio Games. All right, so I will link my Biblio Games TBR video down below if you haven't seen it yet, but I kind of last minute decided to weekly vlog this. Today is Saturday, June 1st, but typically I'm gonna do these vlogs Sunday through Saturday, and then I'm hoping to post them like Monday, Mondays or Tuesdays, I'll have to see. Um, so this vlog will have one extra day in it, but whatever, it's fine. So this week, what I want to accomplish. So I have six books for the Biblio games, and then I have for sure at least two other ones. I have one for the Page Dwellers book club that I'm in, and I have one that I need to read in order to read one of mine for the Biblio games. So, uh kind of have eight books on my TBR for the month. So I wanted to listen to one of my books and then hopefully read two. So I'm hoping to read three this this week. Um, the first one I started this morning listening to it and that is Inside the O'Briens by Lisa Genova. This one is the one that's about a man who learns that he has Huntington's disease and kind of how his family deals with that and the whole genetic component of it. I talked about it. I talked about all of these a lot more in my TBR, so I'm not going to get super into them, but um, this is the one that I'm listening to on Scribd because I, I just feel like non-fantasy books in general are a lot easier to listen to um, and like follow along with audiobook wise. I think I'm going to read a Quarter of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass, and I'm going to hopefully read, start and finish, Arch Enemies by Marissa Meyer. I do want to get to this one first, as I mentioned in my TBR. I am not a big fan of Renegades, so I'm not super looking forward to this, and I'm also scared it's going to put me in a slump. Renegades didn't put me, like, in a slump slump, but it did get me out of the reading mood, for sure. Um, and I really don't want that to happen at the beginning. <laughs> so I'm thinking about reading this one first. So at least like this wasn't the first book I read. So these are the books that I'm hoping to finish by the end of this week, by the end of this vlog. And I will check back in with you guys later. <laughs> Sunday the 2nd and it is about seven almost seven o'clock in the evening and I am finally cutting myself off from schoolwork I have been doing homework all day and I'm just in that mindset where like I just want to get this entire research presentation done but I don't need to get it done today so I just need to cut myself off so I have some time to like relax today but that's what today's been so I haven't read anything yet today but um yesterday I read some stuff since I have talked to you so I did want to mention another book that I'm going to be hopefully finishing this week is Option B by Sheryl Sandberg this is required um reading for the positive psychology class I'm taking right now but we're not going to talk about that because that's boring Yesterday I read 41 pages of A Court of Thorns and Roses and I'm really liking it so far. It's fun. I'm getting like evil stepsister vibes. <sighs> kind of like a Cinderella and her stepsisters kind of thing from Feyre and her sisters. They kind of suck. But yeah, so the beast finally showed up and she's gonna go with him. We all know how the Beauty and the Beast fairy tale works, so I'm excited to see 
what happens next. So far, I'm really enjoying it. I started listening to Unscribd is Inside the O'Briens by Lisa Genova, and I am on page 128. So I listened to a good chunk yesterday and I am really loving it. I think it's one of those ones where I feel like I'm liking it more because it's an audiobook, just because the guy who reads it sounds a lot like how you would think the main character sounds like. And I don't know, I just, does any, let me know if you can relate to that. Like if you're listening to an audiobook sometimes and you just like get this feeling that you're getting a better experience out of it through the audiobook than you would physically reading it. The main character, Joe, you know, he's a middle-aged white man. He's Some of his views are kind of annoying, but I get why they're that way because they contrast with the views of his kids. It's no spoiler that he gets diagnosed with Huntington's disease and that is a genetic disease. So at this point he has been diagnosed and he is sitting down with his wife. They're just now having a conversation with their kids about like telling them about his diagnosis and also telling them that uh, it is genetic. So each of his children has a 50% chance of developing Huntington's. And so it's up to them, like if they want to do the blood test he did to figure it out. Every kid of someone with Huntington's has a 50% chance of inheriting it. And it says, um, to date, 90% of people at risk for Huntington's disease choose not to know. That was like crazy to me, but it's like, I don't know what I'd do in that situation, but I don't know. I don't know if I could live with like the not knowing. But anyway, that's my update for today. I will talk to you guys tomorrow when hopefully I have read more of A Court of Thorns and Roses. Hello, so today is Monday the 3rd and I just finished filming my May wrap up, so that was really fun. Wrap ups are like my favorite videos to film, I think. And I just want to update you. I didn't read a ton yesterday, but I did read some. I it was very annoying. I could not fall asleep until 4 a.m. yesterday, so I'm exhausted. And I was in that weird mood where I was like tired, but I wasn't sleepy. So I didn't want to get up and read. I did read some, but it's like I could have read a lot if I had the motivation at the time. But I'm now on page 102 of A Court of Thorns and Roses. I wasn't like super into it until like page 70 or so when Feyre goes outside and she sees this like creepy thing. Yeah, that like spooked me and now it's like really good and I'm really invested in it. As of right now so that's where I'm at with that I have made significant progress on inside the O'Briens because I'm listening to it on Scribd and today I was like packing up all my stuff from being from house sitting for six nights and then unpacking all of it back in my apartment and cleaning and doing a bunch of boring stuff so I've had a lot of time to listen to that today yeah, there's only like 50 pages left. It is still really good. Uh, the main guy, Joe, is like starting to decline more and more and it's affecting his job as a police officer and all this kind of stuff. So it is, it's very sad, but Lisa Genova's writing, as always, is just really, really good. So I'm really liking that a lot and I'm glad I decided to listen to it. It makes a really good audiobook. Also, I wanted to mention... I saw a week ago from today, I saw Aladdin. So let me know if you have seen it and what you thought of it. And on Saturday, a couple days ago, I saw Godzilla, the new Godzilla, and I liked it. It was good. Aladdin was better than I thought it would be. And I feel like that's what everyone's saying is that it's better than they thought it would be. But like Will Smith was better than I thought he would be. Um, I just, I like the song they added for Jasmine, like, on its own. Like, if I listen to it on Spotify by itself, but in terms of, like, putting it in the context of the movie, it just doesn't really fit for me. So, I don't know. The thing I like the least about Aladdin, the remake, I think, is Jafar. He has none of the cool vibes of the animated Jafar. But other than that, I thought it was a really good adaptation. And then Godzilla, 
I'm here for Vera Farmiga always and I am team Godzilla if you're picking teams between him and King Kong. It was just really fun. It's one of those ones that's like just a fun action movie and it's action I guess, action adventure and it's really cool to see it on a big screen. So yeah, but if you've seen any of those, let me know your thoughts. I'm hoping to see Ma soon as well. There's just so many good movies coming out in the next couple months that it's like overwhelming. And I'm like, here, take all my money. Hello. Hi. Today's Wednesday the 5th. So I finished listening to Inside the O'Briens. There is a hair on my shirt. I haven't decided what I'm gonna give it yet. I'm thinking either a 4 or 4.5. It was really really good. I don't know if the ending really was like satisfying though in the way that I thought that it was gonna be so I don't know how well it like fulfills that Biblio Games prompt but I mean it's whatever. I'm wearing shorts, which means that it's freaking hot. I hate wearing shorts. I hate summer clothes. I hate tank tops. I hate shorts, sandals, all of it. So today's the first day that it's 100 degrees Fahrenheit, which is good because in past years, it's been 100 degrees in May. So at least we made it until June. I have a couple booktube videos that I really wanna watch and I want to read at least 50 pages of A Court of Thorns and Roses. Okay, um, I'm reading Akatar, and a fairy just got his wings ripped off. This shit's dark, like, that's what I'm liking about it so far is like the creatures that Feyre has met in the woods and then like this happens. I started listening to uh, the Linger audiobook which isn't part of my TBR but obviously like any pages I read count towards the readathon. The audiobook is still like just as fantastic as the one for Shiver and I think I'm like 70% of the way through the book already. I've listened to it for quite a long chunk of time today when I was doing stuff for my other job so um yeah. So I'm probably most likely going to finish that by tomorrow night as well. I have about an hour and a half left and I do think like it definitely doesn't have middle book syndrome. Anyway, as I was saying, um, yeah, Linger doesn't have middle book syndrome so far, which is nice. And I'm liking it almost as much as Shiver. I mean, it is, I feel like less has happened than Shiver, but it's still, it's been really, really good. Um, and it's cool because maybe it did happen in Shiver. I don't think it did though. But we get um, perspectives from Cole. Well, I mean, we definitely didn't get one from Cole and Shiver. And then we get one from Isabel. Isabella? I should probably know her name. But yeah, so that's really cool. So we have like four shifting perspectives. That's the T. What's up guys? Today is Sunday. Uh, this is was not supposed to be in this vlog because I was supposed to end the vlog on Saturday. However, I was binge reading A Court of Thorns and Roses until like 12 a.m. And then I went to bed and I just finished it when I woke up. So I wanted to include that in here since I technically I got really close to finishing it by the end of this vlog. These are the books that I read this week. I've already talked about Inside the O'Briens, as you know. I gave it 4.5 stars, I believe. Linger, I listened to on Scribd. And I gave this 4 stars, but I think I might drop it to 3.5. I think I'm going to drop it to 3.5. Um, still really good. The audiobook is just so good. I think it was read by the same people who read Shiver. And I just... I just love the lighthearted kind of doesn't take itself too seriously werewolf thing. 
Um, it's fun. It's fun and I enjoy it and I'm looking forward to reading forever. Okay, this book took me like a week to finish and I don't want to get super into what I think because I feel like I'm going to say a lot of things in my wrap up at the end of this month and I also, like I just finished it like 20 minutes ago. So I'm still trying to process how I feel about it. But it, it was really slow for the first like 150 pages and I think that's why it took me so long to read it. And then last night I was reading it for like two hours and I hit like a really good spot where a bunch of things were happening and I just didn't want to go to bed but I was falling asleep. So I set my alarm and I woke up early this morning and I finished it. I have no idea what I'm gonna rate this. I wanted to say like rating things, you know, it's very subjective and my Goodreads reviews aren't very, like, in-depth and, I don't know, professional. I mostly write them for myself and also, like, if a friend just wants to know if I liked it or something. You know, people who trust me in my opinion, they'll just get a little short thing. But I'm not out here trying to write actually good reviews because <laughs> some people I follow do write actually really good in-depth reviews. And I'm just not interested in that unless I was to like receive a book for review, which I do have one of those and I need to get to it. But in that case, like obviously I'll write a really in-depth good review, you know, not good, a really in-depth well-written review. But for these, it's just kind of to remind myself why I rated it the way I rated it. <clears throat> um, so they're mostly for me. So just, just some information for you. My reviews aren't really noteworthy. I'm I'm trying to assess because there were parts of this that I really liked and then there were parts that I really didn't but I think there was more that I liked than I didn't like but I'm trying to figure out how much weight the things that I didn't like have and if they how, like how much to drop their rating down for the the few things that I really didn't like. So I'm guessing it's going to be somewhere around a 3.5 to a 4.5? I don't know. Anyway, I'm glad I finally read it. Feyre is interesting, but she's kind of badass. Um, Tamlin's the worst. Resand is kind of the worst, too. And Lucian is the only good guy in this. Also, can we talk about, oh my god, Amarantha? is my ultimate female villain aesthetic. She's great. She puts Lilith from A Curse So Dark and Lonely to shame. Anyway, okay, this is taking too long. So those are the books I read this week. Didn't get to Arch Enemies, but I'm hoping to do that next week. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope your first week of the Biblio Games went well if you are participating. Let me know down below, are you a Court of Thorns and Roses fan or not? Please, no spoilers for the rest of the series. Yeah, okay. Beep.